All right, guys, today we're here to talk about the gutless method. Uh, I, I've grown up hunting uh, since I was a kid in the Blackfoot River Valley. Quite frankly, I name our knives after places I've hunted and fished. The Blackfoot River Valley has all kinds of game from deer, bear, elk to fishing and upland birds. Since I was a kid, I've been hunting and I've been gutting out animals. And quite frankly, I'm still, I still feel like I'm learning a lot. Um, but I wanted to talk to you guys about this gutless method. And I'm going to start right off by saying I'm, I'm frankly, I'm not a big fan of it. And I got a couple reasons why. I will say though, the gutless method can actually be really handy and I'll, and I'll give you an example of a time that I did use it. You know, when you, when you, when you take down a moose like I did, I was 21 years old, I was in Canada and I shot this moose and the guide and I walked up to it and the body was massive on the thing. It was absolutely huge. And frankly, we couldn't move it. We couldn't roll it over, we couldn't drag it. There were some thick trees around it that we ended up having to cut out of the way in the end anyway. But we had to quarter that, that half of that moose out that was laying there facing us before we could even deal with the size of the body of this thing with just two of us. So the gutless method does have some, some good purpose to it and some good uses. And quite frankly, if you do do the gutless method right all the way through, it, it, it can be a, a handy thing. So let's talk about what the gutless method is. The gutless method is exactly what we say it is. You're, you're breaking down that animal without actually removing the guts from the cavity of the animal. Now some people are going to argue that this makes your gutting process cleaner. You're not dealing with the guts, you're not touching the guts. And my argument honestly for that is you need to learn how to just use the gutting method a little bit better. You're not just jamming your knife straight into that animal and ripping up the thing all the while poking into the inner, inner parts of the animal's cavity. You know, what I always do is I make a small incision in that animal and I get my two fingers in here like so and I run that blade right up that, that animal's hide. That opens up that cavity, allows you to access all the guts without actually poking holes in it and ruining a lot of the meat that the, that the, uh, the gut biome can run into. Here's some disadvantages to me with the gutless method. One, you don't take the organs. So you leave the organs in it and quite frankly, I think as hunters, we should be taken home and using as much of the animal as possible. So that's a, that's a big part to me right there that's a drawback. Also, if you're an archery hunter, one of the biggest, most important reasons why you want to get that animal opened up right away is to cool the cavity of that animal. Well, one of the best ways to cool the cavity of that animal is to open it wide up and pull out that 50 or 60 or 80 pounds of guts that are in that animal and get them away from the carcass. Immediately now you have cooling action happening in the, in the body of that animal. In that, in that time of year, one of the best things you can do is actually open up the neck hide, even skin out the neck, open up the esophagus area, the throat, get the windpipe out and let that, even, even when it's 70 or 80 degrees, that animal can start to cool down. At that point, especially if you're going to leave it overnight, prop that animal open, even get some of that meat hung up in a tree where air can get all the way around it and you're going to get that cooling action that you need to get an animal out in archery season where, you know, your chances of spoiling is quick. An animal can spoil starting in just a few hours. Quite frankly, that process starts the minute, minute that animal expires. So get that animal open, get those guts out. One of the other drawbacks that I don't like about the gutless method is a lot of people don't know how to do that and get into the tenderloin area and take the tenderloins out. The tenderloins are on the back side of the spine above all the guts and the, and the organs and stuff like that. So there are certain techniques and ways that you can get in behind la the last rib and get to those, and get to those uh, tenderloins, but make sure that's some of the best meat in the animal, the back straps and the tenderloins. Make sure you're getting into that stuff and getting those out. You don't want to waste that kind of meat. One of the things that people say about the gutless method is it's faster. Maybe that's true, maybe 10 or 15 minutes, but here's the problem that I have with that argument. You've been spending months, maybe years of your life planning for this trip. You're headed out west, you're going to go hunting. You take all this time, you take days off work, you scout, you spend time on Onyx maps on your computer, you're doing all this work and then you get into the field and you might take days or even weeks to get this animal harvested. You shoot that animal and now all of a sudden you're worried about an extra 15 minutes. I don't buy that argument and I don't like it. In fact, John Dudley says with knock on, 
Put some music on and get comfortable. You know, when you, when you actually harvest an animal, you need to position that animal in a place where you can kneel down, sit down next to it, whatever it takes to sit there and do a clean and precise job. Cleanliness of your meat, that's another thing. When you guys take down an animal, lay out a tarp, lay out your rain jacket that's in your pack to set, to set meat on. Maybe you don't have a hand there to put those quarters in a, in a game bag. Let me ask you this. Would you ever take your meat from Costco your nice ribeye that you buy and throw it in the driveway and then go in the house and trim half of it off and barbecue it. Well, that's what you're doing if you're setting your meat out in the dirt. You're actually just wasting really, really good meat that you worked hard and spent a lot of money to harvest. I always tell people when they're doing the gutting method, one of the tools that are in, is, that's in your pack should always be a small saw. Yes, our knives will beat through some of the pelvis bones. You can, you can absolutely hack through the ribs or the sternum of some of these animals but it just makes it a lot easier to take a saw and saw open that pelvis area and spread that animal open. Helps you get those guts out easier. It just makes the breaking down of the animal a lot nicer. It's very important that you get those guts out of that animal and let that thing cool down. One of the other things that you gotta consider in rifle season is the fact that that animal can freeze overnight. You shoot that animal and then it drops to zero degrees and you've left the guts in it to come back and deal with the next day. You've got a giant frozen brick that's sitting there that you now have to deal with. I like to get those guts out and at least do some of the pre-work. So when I come back the next day and that animal's starting to set up or it's starting to freeze, you can actually break some of that stuff down without too much, too much of a fight. The other part about doing the gutless method is you're now leaving all that extra weight in that carcass. So when you do take those first couple quarters off and you gotta flip it over, if it's an elk or a moose or something big like that, you're moving all that weight back and forth. I like to just get the guts out and get it out of the way, clean things up really nice with a water bottle, and then now I can just butcher that meat and take really nice care of it. The last thing I'll say is with cleanliness is hair. Do your best when you're cutting to not cut across the grain of that hair. Actually get up underneath the hide and cut the hide side, the leather side, the meat side of that hide, and you'll have way less hair in your meat. Just a couple little pieces of hair can ruin one steak. The other thing you can do to remove hair when you get home before you start cutting that meat up is take a small torch from like an Ace Hardware or Home Depot and torch that whole, that whole carcass. All your quarters, all of that gets rid of that hair, it burns that hair off and now it's not in your meat cutting while you've got that set up your, on your block in your house and, you, and you're cutting out steaks. So guys, this is kind of covering the gutless method versus the gutting method. Both work. Both have some advantages, but frankly, I like to get those guts out and get that cavity cooled down as quickly as possible.